Morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to proceed. Please be seated. Officer, can you ask Ms. Canarac to come in and resume the stand, please? Sure. Thank you. Because we had a break, we're going to uh, re-swear uh, you today. So if you can place your left hand on the Bible, please. Raise your right hand. My clerk will administer the oath again. Do you swear in the presence of Almighty God that the testimony you give to this court regarding this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name or spell your last name for the record. Lauren Shea Kenrack. Last name K-A. N is in Nancy A-R-E-K. Thank you. All right. You may have a seat, ma'am. Thank you, sir. All right. Very good. Counsel? Thank you, Judge. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Good morning, Ms. Morgan. Ms. Canterbury. Yes, sir. Did you ever threaten... <laughs> Mary Haskins. No. Did you ever threaten Michael Barrison? No. Do you consider some of the posts you put on social media threats? I think some could proceed that way, yeah. So are you saying now that you did threaten them? No, that's not what I'm saying. I said I did not threaten Michael Mark Barrison or Mary Haskins. You're asking, I think, could you repeat that second okay, question let, again? Let, let me rephrase it. Do you consider the social media posts that you were posting threatening to both Barrison and Mary Haskins? I consider them that they could be perceived as threatening. And did there come a time when you knew that Michael Barrison was scared? No. Was it your intention to scare Michael Barrison? Um, maybe at, at, the po at a point. What point was that? I don't recall after being bullied and tortured for weeks and days. show you exhibit 200 C-32 and direct your attention to item number 2090. May I question? Yes. Can you take a look at number item 2090? 
They're listed on the left by numbers? Yes, I see. Is the phone call? Text message from your phone. Of oh, this phone outgoing. Okay. It's hard to read this on the map, I guess, a little bit. Yes, I see. Okay. And does that refresh your recollection as to whether or not on July 25th, 2019, that you, your boyfriend, and your father were aware that Michael Barrison was scared. I'm sorry, could you just give me one second? Context here. Okay, ir irrespective of the context, isn't it a fact that on that date, July 25th, 2019, mm -hmm. that you, your boyfriend, and your dad were aware of the fact that Michael Barrison was scared? It seems in this text message because it says Michael is scared. So. Who wrote that text message? I believe I wrote it. When, when you say, I believe yes. I wrote it, yes. is there any question in your mind that the records of your cell phone indicate exactly what you wrote on that day? No, I was just confused because I wasn't sure if this number was me sending the text or the other person sending the text that we were talking in a conversation. Okay, so irrespective so, yes. of who said it, all three of you knew that Michael Barrison was scared on that day, correct? I wrote the words, yes, Michael is scared, correct. Now, on August 5th, two days before the shooting, were you also aware that Michael Barrison was scared? Possibly. We thought perceive that it's possible. I show you exhibit D one hundred C ten. May I approach that? Yes. <clears throat> I'm going to show you this exhibit. Sure and refer you to item number 910 from your phone and ask you to read that to yourself there. Yeah, your fans, what date was this? Sorry. August 5th, two days before the, the shooting. shooting. That's what I thought. Okay, yes. Um, so I, should I read what I wrote? No. Okay. Asking you, were you aware that Michael Barrison was scared. It seems that it can be perceived that way, although, again, given the context, okay. I guess I'll, I'll just say, I'll leave it at yes, if you perceive that way. Okay. When you say perceived, is there any doubt in your mind that on the day reflected on this document, you indicated that you were aware that Michael Barrison was scared. Yes. We, in this message, it seems to say he. Can I can I read this just so will that be okay? No, I'm asking you a specific question, if I may. Sure. Okay. Was Michael Barrison scared okay. two days before? Yes. The hold, hold on. That's that's not the question. All right. No, it's it's what she said, right. her perception. She can't testify about the defendant's state of mind, only her perceptions. Rephrase your re question. Oh, it's withdrawn. Miss Canterac. Yes. Your perception of Michael Barrison two days before the shooting was that he was scared, correct? Sure, yes.
on the day before the shooting, was it your perception that Michael Barrison was deathly afraid of your father? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again? Okay. On August 6th, yes. was it your perception, based on your observations of Michael Barrison, that he was deathly afraid of your father? I would not say that he was deathly afraid, but I do think he was afraid of my father. So it was written somewhere, it's an exaggeration. If I can approach, I show you exhibit 200C-47 sure. and ask you to look at item number 512. Yes, sir. Yes, that's exactly what I thought I probably wrote. Was your perception the day before the shooting of Michael Barrison that he was deathly afraid of your father? Was it my perception? Yes. It was my perception that Michael was afraid of my father. I, can't, it's, I don't know if this is another example. Can I read, please? No, ma'am, just... Just answer the questions okay, that's asked. If there's any follow-up needed, the okay. state can follow up with questions. Okay. So just answer the, the no council's questions, okay? Yes, Thank it you. was my perception at this time that he was afraid of my father. When you say afraid, will you agree with me that there are very varying degrees of fear, correct? Correct. And, and can you tell the jury how you described your perception of Michael Barrison's fear of your father? It was described the way that it was just read. Can you? He was deathly afraid. That's what was written. Now, yesterday, the prosecutor introduced a photograph of your, your dog. Do you recall that? I do. And it was a picture uh, taken probably uh, many feet away with, with your dog uh, just sitting there, correct? Correct. I show you Defense Exhibit 800 D1 okay. and ask you if this is a, another picture of your dog. Yes, it is. Sorry. How about 800 D2? Oh, she's yawning? Yes, that is also my dog. You, you described that as a yawn? Um, in that photograph, and I'm referring to 800 D2. That is the yawn. That is exactly what that is. And that's something that you, you posted, correct? Yes, I posted this. Now, what type of dog is that? Um, a, do a dachshund, which is like the weenie dog kind of thing. A dachshund and a mini Rottweiler. She's basically a mutt. Um, but those are the things that the ASPCA said that she was when we rescued her. Well, did you ever put on social media that she was a Doberman mix? Maybe. Somebody might have asked us and we said, yes, possible. Did you describe her as a guard dog? Yes. The nighttime army. I'm sorry. Mr. Belinkus, is, can I see you at the bench, please?
Council. So, Mr. Canarac. Yes, sir. <coughs> During this incident, that dog was outside at some point, correct? Correct. <coughs> and will you agree with me that he attacked Michael Barrison? Yes. He was biting him. His teeth were were grabbing his body, correct? Yes, her teeth were nipping at him and biting at him, correct. Did you see that dog biting at his groin area next to his genitals? No, I did not see that. Where did you see this dog biting Michael Barrasso? I mostly saw her biting him and Robert in, I guess, just random places while barking. I, I was really losing a lot of blood, so I, it's not clear as to where exactly she was, you know, nipping around. Sorry. Well, will you agree with me that when you were talking to the prosecutor about what exactly happened on this day? that you neglected to mention that your dog was biting Michael Barrison. I don't think I neglected to mention it. It didn't, wasn't at the forefront of my mind and I wasn't asked, so I didn't answer. So you'll agree with me that contained in your detailed statement of the event which you've reviewed, Yes that nowhere did you mention that your dog attacked Michael Barrison. I, I don't know exactly. I'm sorry, can you just repeat that question sure. one more time? It's a little sure. confusing. You've reviewed your transcript of your interview with the prosecutor's office, correct? Um, I, I'm not sure if I reviewed the transcript. I watched a video. So, and will you agree with me yes. that throughout that entire video, mm -hmm. when you were questioned with regards to this specific instance, mm -hmm. nowhere in that video did you mention that your dog attacked Michael Barrison? I don't remember. It was right after I got out of the hospital. If it's not in there, it was probably not the first thing on my mind to say about what happened when you got shot by the shooter who shot you. Mentioning a dog barking was probably not the first thing, or not, um, nipping was probably not the first four thing in my mind. When, when you say nipping, what do you mean by that? I mean nipping, like just like, you know, barking, just nipping at the people that were involved in what was going on at that moment which was not me at that very moment. to this photo being shown to the witness. You're going to have her comment on a photo of an injury and her characterization of it? I'm not qualified to do that, Mr. Malinkas. So, Ms. Cataract, based on your recollection of the event, it's your testimony that Your observations of your dog were that he was just nipping at Michael Barrison. Yes. 
was he nipping hard enough to break the skin based on what you saw? I have no idea. They're all wearing clothing, so I don't, I have no idea. Now, on the 6th, did that dog attack Dr. Cox? Objection. Again, didn't I rule on this already, Mr. Belenkis? Objection sustained. Move on, Mr. Blankus. Now, yesterday you talked about a, uh, a plan that you had with regards to Michael Barrasso. Um, was part of your plan to destroy Michael Barrasso was to contact DIFIS, or DCPP? No, at least, no, no, actually. Did you, in fact, contact DIFIS? I, in fact, did not contact DIFIS. July 10th, 2019, did you search on your phone for the DIFIS hotline? I don't recall. I don't believe so, but I don't recall. July 31st, do you recall searching DIFIS anonymous hotline? I do not recall, but it's possible. I'm going to show you what has been marked. Uh, Defense Exhibit 200-D1, and I'm going to refer you to item number 83. Sure. What's that number, Council? 80, 83, Judge. Thank you. It's July 31st. This is, looks like a search or something, not a, not a phone call. 
I asked you specifically, did you yes. search for Dyfus's anonymous hotline on that day? And I didn't recall. Now you've shown me, now I recall. Did you also search for Dyfus's hotline on July 10th? Possibly. the same exhibit. I'm referring you to item number 206 and ask you if that refreshes your recollection sure. as to whether or not you were searching for Dyfus's hotline on that day. The it tent. Different, say different day? Or? Different day. Yes. So when you say possibly, you did in fact search for for Dyfus's number on those two occasions, correct? It looks that way, yes. When you say it looks that way, is there any doubt in your mind, based on those records mm -hmm. that I just showed you, right. that you did in fact do that? There is doubt in my mind, but again, it is on my record, so it was searched from my phone. What is the doubt in your mind? Can we talk about that for a second? Sure. Would you, where would you like me to What's the well, doubt? Let, him, your, let him ask a question. What is the doubt in your mind after looking at those records that you, in fact, were searching for Dyfus's anonymous hotline? The doubt in my mind is this. Earlier that year, Justin Harden, Michael's assistant trainer, had stolen my phone at a restaurant and we caught him, like we called it, and we found him in his vehicle breaking into my phone and going through it just like a month or two before around. So while yes, it's possible that I was just simply searching for a hotline number or just start making inquiries online, it's also possible that Justin Harden, who does possess phone technological skills that I do not, after having stolen my phone and broken into it, just right before this, may have been able to do things with my phone that I did not. And so that's the only reason I'm saying this. I don't know whether that's true, could have definitely been me, but there was always <coughs> a, a doubt in my mind in regards to things that were done after that phone was stolen. On two separate occasions? Seems that way, yes. Now, on the 6th, mm -hmm. you're aware of the fact that uh, the townspeople came to this facility, correct? Correct. Can you inform the jury how that came about? Sure. So, at this point, no one is speaking. Um, Michael's girlfriend at the time, and, and Michael, but mostly the girlfriend, a couple together had told the staff members, apparently, not to respond to any of our messages, not, if we had a question about feed, don't respond, nothing. We learned that, I think we were doing night check, that there is a, 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 a dryer, not a washing machine, but a dryer, a clothing dryer, that was plugged in in the on position and would not turn off. And as a horse owner, that is your biggest fear, a barn fire, that is all you think about. We texted, or I, excuse me, I texted one of Michael's main staff members. This is Cassandra. We overheard you telling Ruth that the dryer is not turning off and she's sleeping. She didn't hear you. 
and that will definitely cause a fire. Could you please just confirm that the, you've turned it off or it's unplugged, anything, just so I can go to sleep for the night, basically. She did not answer me. I think I texted her again saying, Cassandra, please, I'm really, really worried about this. The dryer's on, it cannot be in the on position while plugged in, just going and going in all night long in the stable area where all my horses are. Again, she ignores me. I believe I might have texted Michael also. And if I did, it was certainly ignored. And the, I think the following day, or the maybe the day prior, whenever this incident happened and there was zero response, nobody was letting us know, just, yes, it's fine, it's off. You're good to go. It was my decision to let the fire marshal know there were fire hazards going on, they were not answering us, and we needed to take it to a different level and bring it to the attention of the fire marshal because that's how scary it was for us at this time, at that time. Isn't it a fact that part of your plan to destroy Michael Barrison was to get him kicked out of the stable area and make him homeless? Maybe. Maybe? Yes, maybe. So, would you agree with me that it's a little bit more than maybe a washer or a dryer causing the an issue than what you just testified to? Uh, no, because we had no idea that that would be a result of calling a fire marshal and build, or a building inspector. So I would not say it was a plan to get him evicted from, at least not my plan, to get him evicted from the barn. We simply called the fire marshal and building inspector. I have no idea what the building inspector thing was exactly. Um, that wasn't my like, forte. But the fire marshal part of it was. I can approach show. I'm going to show you the exhibit 102. Yes. Okay. Is this a one and a half page letter mm -hmm. that you wrote to the building department and fire marshal? Yes, I. I wrote this. This is my handwriting. Correct. Okay. So, first of all, there was a lot more than a, a call, correct? There is this blood, this letter. I'm not even sure if there was a call, actually. But there was, we notified them. Was, I should have used that word. Okay, so uh, I apologize. You, they were notified. When you just testified that you called them, that was incorrect. I, I misspoke. I'm not sure if we actually called or I should have said notified. Okay. Call is probably the wrong choice of word. When you say notified, did you send the town a detailed letter with regards to various issues at both the house and the stable? Yes. Did you inform them that the condition was dangerous and possibly illegal? Sorry. Did you just repeat the question? I wasn't sure if you said which area we're referring to which we're referring. Would you agree with me that this letter sets forth numerous things that you alleged create a dangerous situation yes, at both the house and the stable area. That would be a correct statement, yes. And part of this has to do with the construction that is currently going on, correct? Um, correct. And isn't it a fact that your boyfriend was doing a lot of the work. 
pretty much all of it, but most of it, yes, correct. You, you basically indicated to them that it's a very dangerous and illegal situation, correct? Um, yes, that was written. I was, I was just noticing um, it was Robert Goodwin that actually wrote it, but that's saying it's not important. Yes. Well, when you say Robert Goodwin actually wrote it, doesn't your signature, your signature, appear on it right below his as a witness to yes. this letter? Yes. And, and who drafted this letter? You or Robert? Um, we drafted it together. Um, it was supposed to be typed, so I, it wasn't supposed to be written like this, but it was drafted by both of us. Did you have Robert personally go down to the town? I didn't and have, talk to these people? I didn't have Robert do anything. I simply wrote a letter that we both composed together that I think expressed our concerns over several things. And by doing that, you knew that quite possibly Barrison would be kicked out of the stables, correct? Incorrect. We did not know that was going to be a result of anything. We just wanted them to check things out. And my, my, uh, my main concern was, again, the fire hazard, which is the first paragraph. So on, on the 6th, the day before the shooting, the town people actually came, correct? I believe so. I, think, I believe that was the date, is what I'm saying. You, you were on the property that day, correct? Yes, I, I just don't remember if it was that day or the day before. But they were there. <clears throat> and when those people came, did Rob Goodwin show them around and point out the hazardous condition. If he did, I wasn't with him, so if he did, I don't know. Police strike that. After the town officials came through both the farmhouse and the stable area, yes. um, they basically put notices on the door indicating that everyone had to vacate, correct? Of this stable area only? Stable and the farmhouse where you and Robert were living. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, did that seem like two separate questions? Is okay, I'll, Just I'll break, break it down, down Mr. Malinkas, one at a time. With regards to the structure that you and Robert Goodwin were living in, did the town place a notice on the building indicating that it was a hazardous condition and that you could not occupy the structure? Yes. Okay, I'm going to show you D-822 and ask you if these are the notices that were posted on the farmhouse. <laughs> yes, those are, those are notices. And did you read these notices? I did. And it indicates that if you don't leave the premises, it subjects the owner of the building to a $5,000 fine per day, correct? That's not what I recall reading, no. Well, what do you recall reading regarding these notices? I recall reading that in our specific section of the house, there were 
um, smoke detectors that were for some reason not working. That I guess me, the, the building inspector seemed to think that Mr. Barrison had ripped out the hard wiring for some reason, and we read those, and then they gave us the opportunity to fix them and re-enter the property. That's what I read. You read that on these? I mean, I read those violations, yes. Okay, and those violations say, if you remain on the premises, <laughs> the owner is subject to a $5,000 fine. Do you recall reading that? No, I just got to the violation. I don't remember reading the entire thing at all. Okay. Just violations. And it's your testimony that you had communications with the town, correct? Correct. And you remained on the premises with your boyfriend, Robert Goodwin, correct? Correct. And even though you remained on the premises, you continued to display the notices that were placed on all the doors, correct? I honestly don't remember that that picture looks like maybe it was after when, when you say you don't remember I don't remember do, do you re, you've seen photographs that the prosecutor shown you regarding this incident correct I have and and those photographs include pictures of the door where the bullet hole went through correct correct and and if I show you this photo again 822 mm -hmm. Does that look like the door with the shattered glass on it? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Would you agree with me that if the glass was shattered... Did I'm going to object to this line of I'll question. withdraw. Yeah. Move on. Today, you sent that letter to the town. Did you receive a letter from Michael Barrison's lawyer basically telling you to get out? Basically saying that, yes. And, and, and did that make you angry? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And on the 6th, the day the town came and kicked Mar Michael Barrison out of the stable, were you served with an eviction complaint? I'm sorry, an eviction complaint? An eviction complaint. We were never served with a, a court eviction papers of any kind, aside from the lawyer. Are you 100 percent sure of that answer? I, w I would say yes. I didn't see anything. Nothing was on our door saying you were being evicted. I was not served with anything. So yes, that would be my answer. Now on the 6th and the 7th, you were still posting negative things about Michael Barrison, correct? Correct. Now, on the 7th, strike that. Prior to the 7th, on August 4th, were you angry at Michael Barrison? Yes. 
Were you searching for exploding bullets on your phone? Objection. Let me see that sidebar. Now on the seventh, was there an issue with your boyfriend and the blacksmith the morning of the shooting? There was an issue with the blood with our barrier. I do not remember what morning or day it was though. I'm referring to the judge. I have a hearsay objection. Right. She... Well, th was she present? Is this something she knows from her own personal observations? You have to establish a foundation, counsel. Okay. Otherwise, it's hearsay. Yes, she knows about it, but from what source? If it's from her boyfriend telling her, that's hearsay. If she was present and observed it, she'd be able to testify based on her own perceptions and recollection. On the morning of the shooting, were you angry at Michael Barrison? So that last question's withdrawn, right? Yes, sir. All right. The record will reflect that. On the morning of the shooting, were you angry at Michael Barrison? Yes. And did you want that bastard finished? Yes. You wanted that bastard finished. Uh, I was asked and answered, Mr. Belenkis. One time is enough for the jurors. Never afraid of Michael Barrison, correct? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? You were never afraid of Michael Barrison, correct? Not correct. Um, do you recall an occasion in July where he came to talk to you and there was an altercation between you and him? Probably there are a few, so he, yes. Do you, do you remember the time he drove down in his truck, similar to what he did on this day, <coughs> to come and talk to you about something? Yes. Do you recall in that instance, getting into a semi-rage and backing him up all the way to his truck, which was parked in front of his porch. Do you recall doing that to him? No. Do you recall him trying to open his door, pleading to leave, but you literally stood in his door so he could not drive away? Do you recall doing that to him on that day? No, I do not recall doing that to him. Do you recall when he tried to open his truck door Judge, I got, you slammed I got it. Hold shot. on, hold on. Let me see that sidebar. <laughs>
All right, the objections are ruled with the court's direction. Mr. Belenkis, you can't continue. With regards to this incident referred to on July 12th, 2019, when Michael Barrison came to talk to you, at some point he was trying to run away, correct? I don't recall. At some point he tried to open up his truck door to get away from you and you slammed it shut and wouldn't allow him to leave, correct? I don't recall. He came there to confront me in my face and I, I really don't recall what happened after that. I was I was in fear. Do, do you you were in fear on this day? Yes. Do you recall him pleading with you to leave? I do not recall that, no. And you literally standing in his door so he could not drive away. I don't recall that. Okay, I'm going to show you D200C35. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sorry, which number was it? There's a whole bunch of numbers. Let's go first with 4489, the top. Okay. So the whole thing? No. Read this one. We'll go one by one. 4489. This is a text message, correct? Yes, from your phone. Okay. Yes, I wrote this. And does it refresh your recollection on this day? that he came to my porch, got in my face, and tried to berate me, but all I it did was make me throw down my phone and stand in his face until my semi-rage had backed him all the way to his truck, which was parked in front of his porch. Do you recall saying those exact words? Um. I can see that I wrote them, so now I recall sending this message to my boyfriend. Yes. Your boyfriend and your dad, correct? Um, I don't see if there's an extra. Yes, they're both on that same thread, correct. And do you recall on that day, and I'll refer you to 4493, Judge, I believe at sidebar we talked about this was going to be used for impeachment when she said that she wasn't scared of him, not for substantive evidence. So I think the point has been made there. I don't know that it's necessary to go through every text message. That was the, the your representation, Mr. Belenkis. Fine, Judge. Would, would you agree with me that on this day you're referring to, you were not afraid of Michael Barrison? No, I was afraid. I just don't think anybody was there. And I, if that's what I texted, it was either just what I texted my boyfriend and father, or those actions happened in that sequence. But I remember feeling afraid that he came to the house, came at me when no one else was there, and if my action was to get up, and be back in his space, hoping maybe that would get him to go away. That was my action. It wasn't the first time he had done it. Let's go to the, uh, the day of the incident. I'm going to give you a copy of your transcript. That's not good. Thank you. Uh, 
May I approach Judge D200G? I'm going to give you a copy of your transcript because I'm going to try to save some steps. Sure. On the day of the shooting, do you recall Michael Barrison uh, arriving? Yes. And is it your testimony that you had no idea why he was coming down to the farmhouse? Correct. That is my testimony. How was he driving? Uh, he was driving. He was driving down a driveway, kind of the way he always drives, like a little crooked, all over the place-ish. Did you describe his driving to the prosecutor as uh, like a crazy person? Kind of the way he always drives, so probably. Probably did say that. Can, can you please look at your transcript, page five? Sure. Line six and seven, and tell me whether or not that refreshes your recollection as to whether you well, told the prosecutor. I think she just did that, Mr. Belenkis. She just acknowledged no, that. Not definitively, Judge. Yes, she did. All right, I'll move on. Now, how did he park? Um, meaning like what position or in what, what type? What were your observations of him parking? I don't recall exactly because I wasn't paying attention to all that. I saw him pull in the driveway and then I went to go get up, go upstairs to get my boyfriend. So I, I'm not sure if I actually witnessed him parking or not. No. And I don't, actually don't think I did. I, I don't, I really don't remember. Was, I definitely just remember him driving into the driveway. Right. Mr. Belenkis, we need to take a break for a minute. We're having some difficult, well, we're not taking a morning break. Um, don't get ahead of ourselves here. We're just having an issue with the recording equipment. Everything is being recorded, and there was just a very small um, break where there was an issue with it, but it's um, been resolved now. So go ahead, Mr. Belenkis. Ms. Cataract. Yes. When you saw Michael Barrison driving his truck down the driveway and pulling into the parking area in the back of the house, mm -hmm. were you concerned? 
Yes. Did you think something was wrong? Yes. What did you think was wrong? I didn't know, but I knew something was wrong since it had not been a good week. Tensions were high, and now all of a sudden, he's driven all the way to our apartment for some unknown reason. I'm out there by myself on the porch. I did not feel comfortable or safe to the point that I had to run upstairs and make sure my boyfriend would come down with me just for safety reasons. Yeah. Did you think that something was wrong because of all the things you and your boyfriend were doing to him? I could have, um, I could have added to it. Okay. And based on what you knew about what you were doing, you were concerned, correct? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? It was I'll a little confusing. Question. When you see Michael Barrison, yes. in, he parks his vehicle. You were outside, correct? I was outside when he drove in the driveway. Correct. Right. And at that point, you go inside to get your boyfriend, Rob, correct? Correct, yes. And when you found Rob, he was on the telephone, correct, with your attorney. Correct. Now, do you know when Rob called your civil attorney? No, I do not. What did you say to Rob? I said, Rob, Michael's outside. I have no idea why he's here, but he's here, and I don't know why. We hadn't been speaking for days. They wouldn't answer our texts, even about a fire hazard, and he's now in our driveway. Temper problem that we've seen over the course of the time we were there. So that's what happened. Okay, so you stay inside, and Rob goes outside to talk to Michael Barrison, correct? Incorrect. Okay, what happened? I went to get Rob. He came outside uh, to the porch. We were both on the porch for a moment. Robert, I don't remember if he exactly entirely, entirely left the porch or he was just like sort of to the left of me. Um, like on the stairs or near it. I don't remember exactly. Um, I can continue. So Michael then says to Robert, how do we fix things? Like, I'm sorry, I, I don't want a war. How do we make everything better? To which Robert replied, Michael, you want to do that? We have lawyers involved. You have a lawyer, we have a lawyer. Let them talk and handle it this way. He then came back to the porch. Was Michael calm at that point? Completely calm. Uh, would you describe him as sorrowful? Yes. Now, have you looked at your boyfriend's transcript of his testimony? I have not. Have you talked to your boyfriend about this incident? Yes. Did you talk to him last night about this incident? Probably, about the shooting itself. We always talk about that. It's a lifelong, life-changing incident to have someone try to murder you. So yes, probably. Now, at that point, after that conversation with Michael Barrison and your boyfriend, isn't it a fact that your boyfriend walked inside the house? Wait, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I just want to make sure I have it exactly right. Okay. Please listen carefully. Yes, I will. Isn't it a fact that after your boyfriend had that conversation with Michael Barrison, he walked back into the house? 
Not directly, no. When did he walk back into the house? Um, after the police was there, were there, and I guess separated um, Barstone and my boyfriend, he opened the door to put the dog into the house. That's when, that's when he was in the house. After your boyfriend is done talking to Michael Barrison, you come out, correct? I then come off the porch, and he is then on the porch. And how would you describe your demeanor at that point? Interested. Well, do you recall telling the prosecutor that you walked out thinking I'm like Miss Badass? or something, your exact words to them. No, I don't recall that. Do you have the date of that by any chance? It's the transcript in front of you, mm -hmm. September 5th, page 6, lines 5 and 6. Was it pa page 6? Page 6, and the date. line 6, okay, and 5. And again, this was September 5th, right? So I'm just trying to... Um, page 6. Page 6, line 6. So, oh my God, I wish I could change that. Just read it to oh, yourself, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, I'm yeah, so just sorry. read it to yourself to refresh your recollection. Yes. Did you come out like Miss Badass? Yes or no? No. Did you tell the prosecutor that you came out like Miss Badass? I tell them that I walk out thinking that I'm like Miss Badass or something for having even what I would consider now the courage to even approach him at all. Who is Miss Badass? As a character? I don't know. Um, at that point, were you, like, sick of this? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm still saying I'm sick. Same were, were you, like, sick I of was it? sick of everything that had been going, going on that week. So, again, I was interested, as I said before, in what Michael had to say. Now, what do you recall Michael saying to you? He said nothing to me. I spoke first. Once I had seen or thought that there was no danger, having seen Robert just speak to him and come back to the porch unscathed, I then felt it was safe. I could have a conversation with this man. And did you speak loudly enough where your boyfriend, Rob, would hear what you said? Probably. I would think so, but I can't know what he heard that I said or not. Okay, what did you say to Michael? Something along the, I don't know the exact words, something along the lines of, okay, Michael, how do you plan to fix this, and how are we going to settle Rob's... I was about to say the word bill, but I don't think that ever came out of my mouth, because, or it was like mid-word. Right then, I said maybe a sentence, less than a sentence, and right then, it was gone out of his pocket, boom, boom, period. He runs around the table, Oh, sorry, excuse me, I, I messed that up. <coughs> boom, boom. Then he raises his hand up to a Rob was standing on the porch, shoots at him, it, it, the trajectory being the head. And I then do not see Robert anymore, but I see Michael run around me and up the stairs straight to where Rob was no longer. 
and that is what I saw at that, up to that time. Is it your sworn testimony that you saw the actual gun before you heard the discharge? Did you see the gun, yes or no, before discharge. the discharge? Yes, I did. Now, you indicated yesterday that uh, after getting shot, mm -hmm. in your mind, you just ran around in a circle, in your mind, correct? You recall saying that yesterday. I don't remember what I recall from yesterday. I remember we discussed um, that I remember a, I didn't know really where I was disoriented. I know I ran around in an actual circle. But when you mean an actual circle, that's different than what you testified that's to No, no, Mr. Belinkus, don't characterize the testimony. It's the jury's recollection that counts here, not yours. Did you run around in a physical circle? Yes, in a physical circle. And, and did you run around in a circle in your mind? Probably many circles in my mind. Where did you go when you were running around? In a, uh, I don't know, I mean, I could demonstrate if you'd like. Yep, please. Can I take my shoes off? Because sure. I don't fall yes, off. go ahead. So Michael is standing here, shoots me, and I then see him raise his hand, shoot at Robert's head. I look at my chest, and where do you go? What do you do? The circle I ran around on was. In that area. Okay, perfect. You can Thank have you. Sorry about that. Okay. That was embarrassing. <clears throat> Do you recall telling the Morris County prosecutor in your official statement that I took two in the chest and I just see blood like everywhere and as I ran and it, this is the point where it gets a little shady because I don't know where the hell I went. Do you recall saying that to the prosecutor's office? Yes. Did you show them that little uh, movement that you demonstrated in the courtroom? I did not show them because I was referring to I didn't know where I went, meaning in my head. I know I, where I went, the area where I actually moved around. Do you recall telling the Morris County Prosecutor's Office that I went somewhere, I ran, I think I went inside No, I to not. like yell to rob? Do you recall telling the prosecutor that? About your running. Well, I'm running. I do. He, I did go inside to call to Rob to bring him upstairs. You're, you're saying to the prosecutor, you ran inside the house to call Rob after you were shot. Didn't you I, say that? If I did, I don't recall. Like okay. again, it was a few days after being released from the hospital. I was on a ton of pain meds. I might not have understood half the questions they were asking me. At that okay, point. so let's turn to page six. Sure. And, and before I ask you a question, mm -hmm. when you say you just got out of the hospital, yes, and we're on pain medications, mm -hmm. you just recently were shown your actual video of this interview and you had an opportunity to see exactly what she said mm -hmm. did, did you tell the prosecutor that there were there were 
grave issues with regards to what I don't, you I don't think she said there were grave issues. I'll rephrase the question. Please do. Did you tell the prosecutor that you, you didn't run in the house after being shot, like you said in the official statement? I'm sorry, they didn't run in the house? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I couldn't understand. Let's, let's, let's move on. Sure. Go to page six. There. Line 21. Yes. Do you have that? I do. Do you recall saying, because I don't know where the hell I went, and this is after the shooting. Yes. You recall okay. saying that today? Yes, I do. Okay. And if you go down to line 24, do you recall saying, I went somewhere, I ran, I think I went inside to yell to Rob? Mm -hmm. Do you recall saying that to the prosecutor? I don't recall it, but I see that I said it. Yes, I don't know what it means. Do you, do you recall? After the shooting, running into the house, yelling for your boyfriend. No. Do you recall telling pro the prosecutor that the reason why you ran to yell to Rob is because you didn't want him to come out do you recall telling Wait, them that? I'm sorry, could you just give me one second? You're sure. speaking very quickly. Okay. I just want to be able to make sure I can hear And again, if I'm not reading the exact words, yes. bring that to my attention. I absolutely will. So it's on page six of the word. I was just uh, reading this for context. What, would you, what was the exact question again? Did, did you tell the prosecutor mm -hmm. that the reason you ran inside the house and yelled to Rob was for, for because you didn't want him to come out, outside, where yes. things were going on? I did say that at that point. I know what you're talking about. And do you recall... What you yelled to him, don't come out. No, I did not yell that. Did you tell the prosecutor when you gave your official statement that you yelled to Rob, don't come outside? I don't actually recall that at all. I if see you look on page seven, the yep. first line, does that refresh your recollection of it, you telling the Morris County prosecutor? It refreshes that? words that I was saying. Did you also tell the prosecutor that at that point, Rob was not putting two and two together, that you had been shot? Yes. So, will you agree with me that when you first talked to the prosecutor, Rob? Judge, I'm going to object on speculation grounds. I mean, I understand why the detectives ask her these questions, what? but it doesn't make it admissible evidence. He's asking her, what did Rob Goodwin know? Yeah, I'm not sure I understand no, the I, question. I, I mean, the, 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 the words speak for themselves. Okay. Did you tell the prosecutor that Rob heard gunshots? Same objection, Judge. Yeah, I mean, where, where would she get that information o other than from a boyfriend, making it hearsay? Sustained. At some point in time, Rob jumps on Michael Barrison, correct? Correct. W were you outside? I was. Do 
Did you see uh, Rob uh, choking Michael Barrasol? I saw um, he had his arm behind his back and he had him in some kind of like a headlock to restrain him from being able to get the gun again. When, when you say a headlock, would you describe your observations as him putting him in a chokehold? Maybe. I don't know like exact terms of these things. Okay, when, when you say you don't know exact terms, on the day of your official statement, on page 8, line 6, did you describe it as a chokehold? Probably. Can you look at it and tell me Same either page. yes or no? I mean, page yeah, I'm sure I said it. Line 6. Page 8, line 6? <coughs> yes. Do you like no problem? Um, uh, in like a chokehold. So yes, I wrote in like a chokehold. And, and your, uh, your, your boyfriend is an ex-Marine, correct? Correct. Now, at this point, did you start attacking Michael Barrison? At which point? I'm sorry, could you propose what we're talking let about? Let me back up a little bit. Yes. Thank you. When you're talking to Michael Barrison, and you're saying he's firing the shots at you. Mm -hmm. You were on the phone with your civil lawyer, correct? Well, I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I just thought I guess I have a question. If I can no. ask it. Do, no. if you, do you understand the question or not? No. All right. Rephrase thing. your question. At the time you were talking to Michael Barrasso, mm -hmm. And when you say the shots were fired, mm -hmm. you were physically on the telephone talking to your civil lawyer, correct? I was physically holding the phone um, and talking to Michael Barrison. Okay, but your lawyer was on the line, correct? correct? Yes. And, and whose phone was that? Robert's. So. Can I assume when you took two shots into the chest, you dropped the phone? No, I didn't drop the phone. Well, not, not that, sorry, not that I recall. I do not remember dropping the phone. What do you remember with doing, doing with that phone? I honestly forgot I had it in my hand. Totally forgot that Ed David was still on the phone. <laughs> At some point in time, you start beating Michael Barrison with your phone. Correct. Did you have two phones in your hand? No. What did you do with the phone, Robert Goodwin's phone, mm -hmm. after you were shot? I told Ed David, oh my God, oh my God. I'm not asking you what oh. you told him. What did you specifically do with the phone? At what point in time? Let's specify After that. being shot. Can you just read that whole question? Absolutely. I'm so sorry. You're, you're holding the phone. Yes. Where you were having a conversation with your civil lawyer, correct? Prior, yes, correct. Okay. You claim you got shot at that point, correct? Correct. Okay. What did you do with the phone that you were holding after you were shot? I believe I just kept holding it. At some point in time, you picked up your telephone, correct? Correct. Where was that telephone? That was by the door. That was not the door to the laundry room, which is now like semi-open, which was from Rob jumping through the door to avoid being hit in the head with the bullet. Um, so, my phone was somewhere right around there. Okay, so let yes. me stop. We'll go sure. small yes. steps here. Yes, sure. So, it's your testimony that after being shot, 
two times in the chest, out on the patio by that round table, correct? Wait, I'm sorry. I, that was confusing. Could you say that one more time? I'm so sorry. Okay. Where, where were you shot? I was shot. Is there... I mean the location on the yeah, porch the or on the body. On the let's let's specify. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you D eight hundred three. Can you put a big X? Does this accurately um, depict the area where the incident occurred? <laughs> The area, yes. What's that right there? That is a camera okay. and a window. Now, can you put a big X where you were standing when you got shot? Sure. <clears throat> um, it's a little hard to do because everything's all, I guess. Just do it to the best you can. Okay. Uh, I was standing, I'm going to use a So, so the record is clear, and, and this mark is faint on D803, but you can see it. You put kind of like a star, yep. basically right next to the metal table and chairs. Correct. Okay. And that's, that's where you say you were standing when you got shot, correct? That is correct. And from that round table and chairs, you walk all the way to the back steps after being shot, climb up the stairs, and get your phone. Yes, I wanted to call 911. Is there any reason why you didn't use Rob's phone that you already had in your hand? Well, one thing I wasn't even thinking that I had it. When I did realize, the first thing I did, I think I think the first thing I did, was let the person I was on the phone with know, oh my God, okay. I've just been shot. Right, I'm not asking you that. Okay. I'm asking you what you did with the phone, okay? With the phone me, that I was on? Right, so the phone that you were on, yes. at the time you claim you were shot, after your shot, it's your testimony <laughs> that you walk all the way over to the stairs, climb a flight of stairs, and get your telephone, correct? More crawled-ish to there. But crawled? Yeah, I wasn't exactly like running. I was just, I was losing a lot of blood. Okay. So, yes, but I didn't okay. ask if I crawled or walked. Okay. Just what I do with my phone, with the phone. All right, so what did you do? What, what hand were you holding the phone? I think, I think my, I'm right-handed, so I would think my right hand. Okay, so what did you do with that phone? I think after I told Ed David what had happened, I think I just like, placed it on wherever the porch area that I was then on. And for some reason, yeah, that was what I would say. And you didn't use that phone to call 911, correct? Correct. You looked for and found your own personal phone, correct? Yes. And then when you found your phone, did you come back down the stairs to the area where Michael and your boyfriend were struggling on the ground? When I found my phone, I, when I found my phone, I tried to call 911. I couldn't because my arms and my hands were covered in blood. My phone would not open. Okay. So, what was the second half of your question? How, how did you call 911? You're the person. 
The I, first I, person on the 911 call, correct? Yes, I then remembered, oh yes, Robert's phone is out here. I'll use Rob's phone and call 911, which I did, too. Okay, so let me get the scenario correct. Mr. Belinkus, we don't need a summation now. Just ask your questions, all right? What did you do with your phone at that point? I'm sorry, at which point? At the point when you realized you couldn't call 911 mm -hmm. and you decided to get Rob's phone. I put it back down. Put it back down where? Wherever I picked it up from, like I just described a moment ago, near the door by the laundry room, which was also next to where the love seat was. I was in the floor. Mm -hmm. So you came down the stairs with your phone to where Rob and Barrison was struggling. You tried to call 911, correct? Incorrect. I went up the stairs to get my phone and tried to call 911 and my phone would not open. I then put my phone back down. And Where then, did you put your phone back down on that landing? Just, yeah, yeah, um, no. I, remember, my memory, in my memory, I remember putting it back down right where I picked it up, which was somewhere on the actual porch, because that's where it was. Put it down, um, you know. And then, then you go and retrieve the phone that you had previously Placed some somewhere, correct? Yes, I remember that. I, I wouldn't need a. And where was that phone? Button. Where was that phone? We're at somewhere near the vicinity of where um, Robert was restraining Michael. Okay, and at that point is when you claim you called nine one one, correct? Correct. And everybody's heard the nine one one call. Yep. So you're on the phone. After a period of time, mm -hmm. you hand the phone to your boyfriend, correct? I think he kind of took it at that point because I had my phone again. And What do you mean you had your phone? I, I went to go, I, I think I had my phone because... Well, didn't you just, Robert, strike that, didn't you just indicate that you placed your phone back yes. on the landing? Yeah, back on the area. Like, to me where they were having their, where Rob was restraining Michael. Right. In my memory, I do not remember if they were actually like still on the porch or just two steps below on the landing. It was, it was just. Didn't you say yesterday they, they were off of the landing, off the stairs, I believe on I, that concrete patio? I believe I said I wasn't sure that it was, there were two stairs. Okay. So we can go back over it if you'd like to. Um, but uh, what I believe I said it was the same thing I'm saying now, which is that I don't remember if they were actually on the porch flat area or like the, a step or two below on the patio. I don't remember exactly okay. where that was. So, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, you call 911, you have a discussion with them, and then Rob has his phone back, correct? A 911. After I had spoken to them, right. which is very brief. Right. Yes. And is it your recollection that after Rob took the phone from you, mm -hmm. you walked up the stairs and got your phone again? I didn't walk anywhere. Um, there is a point that I went and got my phone. When, when was, was that point? Well, let, let her finish, Mr. Belenkis. Okay. Somewhere in between after I told 911 I'd been shot. Rob was, you know, you could hear him struggling with Michael. At that time, I grabbed my phone. Um, I was covered in blood. I crawled somewhere, whether it was an inch away or half a foot away, to get my phone, thinking the only way that I could help the situation is by helping to make sure no one else gets shot or killed that day which is why I had my phone and was hitting Michael on the head with it, or on the ear with it. How long were you...
Were you beating Michael Barrison with your phone? Maybe a matter of seconds. You're sure of that? Pretty sure, yes. I didn't have... Yeah, uh, yes, I'm definitely sure of that. Do you recall previously saying that you used your seven minutes to help Rob by keeping the six foot four MB subdued by breaking my phone in his cheek and in his ear? Do you recall saying that you were beating him for seven minutes? That's not, wait a second, Mr. Not. Belenkis. That's not what it said. Okay. Let's not, don't characterize things. Okay. Ask a question. If you're reading from something, read the specific words. Do not characterize it. Okay. Did you say these exact words? I used my seven minutes to help Rob keep the six foot four MB subdued by breaking my iPhone on his cheek and in his ear. Probably said that. Yeah. Seven minutes you claim to be beating Michael Barrison. Isn't that correct? Can we just put that in context? Yes, please. Oh, you, you can do that on redirect. That's what redirect is for, Mr. Shelley. Right. Did you also tell everybody that you were medevaced in a helicopter? Yes, I did. That never happened either, did it? Um, I didn't learn that until literally two weeks ago. Okay, my question is... I think I, she answered the question, Mr. Belenkis. What, what's your question? That she wasn't medevaced in a helicopter, which is inconsistent with her statement. Her saying, I just learned that, is not a direct answer, I believe. Ask it again. You said you were medevaced by helicopter, correct? I did, yes. You weren't medevaced by helicopter, correct? As it turns out, that is correct. And, and when you say you just found out two weeks ago, mm -hmm. that was when you went over your statement with the prosecutor, correct? The video. Correct. Okay. And you corrected that statement, correct? You had an opportunity to correct what you said on that video, correct? I know. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll move on. Now, Did you indicate to the prosecutor that with regards to that point of time when you start hitting Michael Barrison with your iPhone phone, that your boyfriend, Robert Goodwin, was not even aware that you were shot? Objection. Calls for speculation. I'm referring to her statement. Just I know, but, it's but in the, the information she gets in the statement, it's hearsay it. within hearsay. Sustained. Now, do you recall bashing and bashing and bashing that guy's freaking ear in with your phone? I do. recall that during that time at some point Michael Barrison was unconscious. No, I do not recall that. Okay. 
Can you please look at page 10, line 13, and ask me if that refreshes your recollection as to whether or not during that time Michael Barrison was unconscious for a few seconds. What, what line on page 10? Line 13. Yes, this was my perception, but I, I know I have no idea. And with regards to your hitting Michael Barrison in the head with your phone, um, did you stop at one point and then start up again? Um, yes, very quickly. Now, when you say very quickly, what was the time period between when you first started to bash your phone into his head? Yes. In relationship to the second time you started doing that? Pretty much the first time I did it, maybe did it like one, like one time, and then my boyfriend, once, this is what he told me, he saw a... Giant. You can't say with someone else. Oh, I'm sorry. Told you. Anyway, my boyfriend, realizing the damage, had tried moving me, or like kind of making me not be where they were so that I wouldn't just, I guess, fall over and die. <clears throat> so, but I didn't want to, I was worried again about the gun going off. So at that point, I came back and tried to hit him again with the phone. And then I just walked right out of everything, just any adrenaline that I may have had just died. observe your dog doing? During which time specifically? This where your boyfriend is on top of Michael Barrisel and you're hitting him in the head with your phone. Same answer as before, which is I witnessed her nipping and yeah, just pretty much nipping both of them like in different areas and, and barking. Okay. Yeah. It was during the time when your boyfriend was physically struggling with Michael Barrison and yes. you were hitting him in the head with your phone. Yes. Are you sure that that didn't go on before any shots were fired? Then what go on? You got to clarify. The beating. The beating Talk by the dad, the dog, and her slamming her phone into his head.